Great. Thanks everybody for hopping on. We're gonna start in about a minute or so, give everybody time to, to jump in. <clears throat> Thank you for spending time with Networks Code today. We truly appreciate it. This is a version control demo. We have an exciting live demo for you today. All right, so about a minute past here, uh, I'm going to get started. So I'm going to present. Thank you again for joining. Uh, we're truly appreciative for everybody hopping on and spending an hour with us today. Just a quick agenda. My name is Brian Daddio, Director of Business Development here at Networks Code. I'm going to do a quick introduction of Networks Code, and then I'm going to hand it over to Tim Shryock and Tim Fiola to do a live demonstration of Networks Code and version control. So we'll dive right in to who is Networked Code. So Networked Code, we provide infrastructure as code services. We do not resell product. That's an advantage for, for our customers because we can give a non-biased, <clears throat> excuse me, opinion when we go and work with our customers. We have a very deep team uh, located here and headquartered in New York City, but we have folks here in the United States and in Europe as well, servicing our customers. We're both vendor and tool agnostic, also a key differentiator in the market for Networked Code. We're big advocates of the open source uh, community. We'll talk a little bit about Nautobot, but we're big advocates of Ansible, Grafana, and just to name a few other open source technology tools that we commonly see. In addition, you'll see on the right, we won two awards. Uh, this past year, CRN top five, uh, fastest growing 150. So really remarkable for our team, <clears throat> excuse me, to continue our growth in the market. So some of the services that we offer, I'm not going to dive deep into this, but we do everything from training, assessments, strategic architectural designs and analysis, architecture and design, support services, implementation services, uh, even big transformation projects as well, and managed services as well. So if you have any questions about some of the services that we offer, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're always interested in hearing more from our customers or prospects or even helping folks continue their journey or start their journey in network automation. We also have a survey. Um, if you want to make an impact to the development of Nautobot, we highly encourage you to respond to this survey. It's going to be in the chat. So if you have a moment, take a, take a quick uh, chance to, to click the link, fill out the survey. It can definitely help impact the development of Nautobot. So without further ado, and I want to give ample time to both Demonstrators, I'm going to pass it over to Tim Shryak, and he's going to talk through the next segment of this demonstration. Tim? Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Shryak, uh, Solutions Architect here at Networks Code. I have a uh, software engineering and uh, network engineering back background, so working here on the team uh, with the representing technical sides. And here with Tim, just going to talk a little bit about the uh, Nautobot and Source of Truth, kind of just hitting some high-level concepts here. Uh, depending on the audience, maybe you're not as familiar with uh, Source of Truth uh, ideas. So just hitting some of those uh, high-level concepts of what we're going to cover today. Generally speaking, as we're looking at Source of Truth and we talk to clients across the industry, uh, we do find there's a, a broad mix of uh, types of sources of truth you might have in an environment, as well as whether or not you're even using them, uh, or what we're defining as a source of truth. Sometimes we might be using things like uh, spreadsheets or CSV files, uh, as opposed to, say, a database. Uh, but this is really where we start to see where if we want to move into automation uh, as well as DevOps methodologies, this becomes a critical component. Uh, and as we kind of look at some of the research we get coming from, uh, you know, like Gartner and other research uh, companies, we see we're talking about how this is going to be a trend as we move forward of using more sources of truth to be able to direct and drive an environment uh, in forward. And really, it is the foundation of everything we do from an automation perspective. And if you look there in the lower right screen, we kind of have this like sort of journey as you go through this uh, progress of moving and beginning into your automation uh, journey. And it's commonly, we do see where we're starting off that journey and we have this very uh, handcrafted sort of a bespoke method by which we drive the initial attempts at automation. 
And then gradually over time, as we uh, move along that journey, it often becomes where we realize the need for this source of truth as we're feeding into things like scripts, maybe that we're writing, whether maybe it's an Ansible playbook or a Python script, uh, we, need, we start to realize this requirement that we need a source of truth in order to act, um, effectively and efficiently drive the data forward. By using source of truth, we're able to also start to begin this process of abstracting the nuances of what it is that we want to accomplish from the specifics of what we need to do that. Uh, so by that, I mean, we no longer have to specify necessarily in our code or our script, which IP address we need to use or which VLAN we're using. Those are things that we can go look up in our source of truth. Also allows us to start to behave in a more vendor neutral fashion. Um, uh, the, uh, commonly, we have this notion of this uh, goal of getting to the eventual end state of intent-based networking. That is, we allow our engineers and our architects to focus on the network tasks that they're trying to accomplish or the design that they're trying to implement, as opposed to the specifics of how this particular vendor implements that feature. Uh, and by without a source of truth, we cannot accomplish this. Uh, so we need to have the source of truth as that foundation in order to get to that point. Also, as we start to use uh, something that is, uh, say, a SQL database uh, to drive our source of truth, now we can also begin to provide uh, tracking and historical changes on our data. So we understand our data's lifecycle as we use uh, different uh, functionalities, and we can track that over time as uh, we move forward using source of truth. Starting to look at Nautilbot as a source of truth. Uh, at its core, uh, it is a, intended to be a uh, network source of truth where we can model and define the features of our network uh, and be able to be very flexible with that so that we can adapt Nautilbot to whatever your particular environment is. Uh, it's inevitable that there will be things that are just a, a little bit different in your environment than everyone else's. And so we want Nautabot to be able to be adapted to your environment and provide that functionality for you and be able to really adapt the model to meet your requirements. Also really extensible uh, as far as being able to interact with Nautabot, whether it's from the REST API or from our GraphQL endpoints, uh, integrating with things like uh, Git or GitHub, other repositories, to be able to extend the platform into your automation and be able to use Nautabot as the uh, glue, if you will, to stitch together the different components you might have in your environment and drive forward from the core source of truth. And finally, uh, at the highest level, we have the platform for network automation apps or applications, uh, being able to really integrate and quickly develop and deploy applications into your environment. And with that, I am going to hand over to Tim to actually dive into our version control feature and give you some highlights there. Awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks, Tim. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Fayola. I'm your developer advocate here at Network to Code. And today we're going to talk about Nautabot's version control app, specifically how it helps you implement safer network automation. I have a couple slides to set this up, then we're going to jump right into the demo. Now, when we talk about not about version control app, there's a couple of terms that might come up in that conversation. The first term is DOLT. So DOLT is a versionable open source database. And Nautabot runs a DOLT database when it is running the version control app. Now, there's also DOLT Hub. DOLT Hub is the company behind DOLT. And dolthub.com is the place to share your Dolt repositories. So for those of you familiar with Git and GitHub, Dolt is to Git as Dolt Hub is to GitHub. And Dolt versions SQL data as Git versions files. So what are we building here? We are building the, a Nautabot application that brings version control to Nautabot's database. Now, a version control database within Nautabot brings Git and GitHub-like workflows into Nautabot. So this enables workflows powered by things like commits, pull requests, CI testing pipelines, peer review, and rollbacks. These workflows bring better data hygiene and safer network automation. And we're going to demo those today. 
So here are a few features uh, of those workflows that we will see today. Uh, first of all, the version control app uh, safeguard introduces safeguards to keep Nautabot's production automation data clean, uh, including explicit checkpoints for human review of the proposed changes and use of webhooks to trigger automated test pipelines against those proposed changes prior to them reaching production. You can also stage your pending data changes without affecting your production data, for example, for a maintenance window. You can uh, do partial or wholesale rollbacks of changes if something breaks once new data reaches production. And, and finally, the version control app gives you a history of all your changes to your production data for audit and accountability purposes. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna demo all of those features now. Okay. This is my Nautabot instance running the version control app. And here's my version control top level menu item up here. So at this point, I am gonna play the person who has the job of proposing changes to Nautabot's production data. So I'll go ahead and do that uh, by, first of all, let me just level set here. Notice that I have an active branch banner up here and I'm on the main branch. The main branch is where you store your production data. It's the default branch. So if I wanna propose changes in a, uh, uh, excuse me, if I wanna propose changes, I can go up to Verge Control and I'm gonna create a new branch. So I'll say Atlanta Leaf Changes. So what this is doing now is it's creating a new branch from the main branch where I can safely make changes without affecting production data. In fact, any changes I make here won't affect production data until I explicitly merge the changes later on. Okay. So we have our new branch at, that got created and notice that the active branch changed to my newly created branch. Now I can go ahead and propose all my changes and not worry about affecting anything in production. So we're going to go to sites, and all our changes today are going to be in the Atlanta site. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the devices here, and I'm going to add a new device. I'm going to call it Atlanta Leaf 09. And now it's a Leaf device. Clearly, I'm going to mistakenly give it a spine rule, and that is an intentional mistake, and we're going to carry that forward. I'm also going to mistakenly give it, uh, give it a, the wrong device type. So I'm making two mistakes right off the bat for purposes of the demo to carry forward. And I'll just go ahead and finish populating this information. Okay, so here is my newly created device, perfect. The next change I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go to Atlanta Leaf 8 and I'm gonna edit this device. So I happen to have a workflow on my, excuse me, a work order on my desk right here that says we, we, we're gonna decom Atlanta Leaf 8. So I'm gonna go into Nautobot here. I'm gonna edit this device and I'm gonna change the status from active to decommissioning. And I'll go ahead and make that update as well. One more change here in the Atlanta area. I'm gonna to go to my circuits and I'm gonna make a comment on this first NTT circuit that says this renews in April of 2022. Okay. Now, uh, you can imagine, I've just made a handful of changes here, but you can imagine in a production environment, there might be dozens, perhaps even hundreds of proposed changes uh, in a given branch that you might wanna merge into production. So I'm doing a handful here, but you can imagine dozens, perhaps hundreds more, okay? So at this point, I I've proposed my changes. I've made my changes. Now, it's, it's clear I probably wanna review my changes before I, before I submit them for approval. So there's a few different ways you can look at the changes you've made in a branch. Uh, the first one, I'll go up to version control and I'll go to commits. Now, for those of you familiar with Git and GitHub, you'll notice that I made a few changes, but I never explicitly made any commits. Um, and that's because 
in the version control app, every time the user hits a create or update or delete button, the, the app automatically creates a commit for you and generates a commit message based on what you've changed. So as I look at my commits here, I can see, huh, I see Atlanta Leaf 8 was updated. I can click on this, I can click on this commit. And this will take me to a page with the diffs specific to this commit. So this commit only had one diff in it. And if I want to see exactly what the diff was, I can click on this in this diff type column here. There's this badge, it's a changed because we changed something. So if I click on this, I can see that yes, this device, Atlanta Leaf 8, was changed from active to decommissioning. Okay. Uh, another way you can look at your, your changes your, you've made so far in your branch is going up to the, the version control top level menu and navigating to diffs. And what diffs will do is it gives you a comprehensive list of all the changes you've made in your branch, not just for a specific commit. So this, what you're looking at here is all the changes I've made in this branch. Now on the right top, excuse me, the top left here, there's a panel that contains like metadata about the branch. And on the right here, there's a diff summary that gives you the, uh, that breaks the, the diff, excuse me, the diffs type into different categories. There, in this instance, there's device, circuit, and interface diffs. And it gives you the quantity of each category in uh, green, orange, or red for adds, changes, or deletes, respectively. And if uh, you're curious about a certain category of diff first, you can, for instance, click on interface diffs in the diff summary over here, and it takes you directly to those diffs. So as I'm, I've created this, this branch and added changes, and I'm reviewing, the, I'm reviewing my changes now, and I'm completely missing the fact that I've made two errors on Atlanta Leaf 9. I've given it a spine role and the completely wrong device type. Otherwise, gosh, everything's looking great here. So at a point, it comes time to formally submit these changes for review. So the way we do that in a version control environment is what's called a pull request. So I'll go up here, here to version control and I'll go to pull requests and I'll just click on the plus button here by pull requests. And I'll just call this Atlanta leaf work. So a pull request in version control terms, it's just a way to propose, to submit your proposed changes for review, okay? And now here is our pull request screen. We've created a pull request. And at this point, I'm gonna switch back to the Nautabot main screen. And now I'm gonna play the part of a person who has the job of reviewing and approving proposed changes to production data. So I would come in here to Nautobot, I would go to version control, and I'd go to my pull requests page. And I find the pull request, uh, whoa, I'm interested in, sorry about that. And I go ahead and click on it. Oh. And notice that this Atlanta leaf changes is the source branch for the pull request. Uh, so, it is a best practice to stay on the source branch for the pull request so you can, while you're reviewing it so you can make changes if you need to. And I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. So a few things happened here in pretty short order. So first of all, we're back on our pull request main screen, but now, huh, we're blocked. Let's investigate what happened there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the reviews tab and we have this message here. The CI checks are complete. They have failed, placing the PR in a blocked status. See Jenkins build number 94 at this URL right here. So what just happened? A few things did. Uh, and in order, to, in order to show you what happened, I'm gonna back out a bit and go back to a slide here. So this is a high level action diagram of what just happened. So I created a pull request in Nautobot. Uh, Nautabot, I have a webhook configured to, for Nautabot to send a webhook to my Jenkins CI platform 
to notify it that someone wants to make proposed changes to Nautabot's production data. Jenkins then runs tests against the data in the branch to test for compliance. And then finally, Jenkins will update the pull request with the test results. And that's what brings us to this blocked state right here. Now, real quick here, I just want to take a look at the webhook that fired towards Jenkins. So this is the webhook. It's configured for pull request objects. And when a pull request object is created or updated, the webhook fires towards this URL, which is my Jenkins environment. And included in the webhook are the branch name, the pull request ID, and the pull request creator. So this is how we got to this state blocked. Let's go ahead and take a look at this URL. OK, what you're looking at here is the output from the Jenkins CI pipeline. And specifically, we're going to zoom in on the results of the tests. So this pipeline conducted just two simple tests, device name compliance and device role compliance. And our device role compliance, that failed for Atlanta Leaf 9. So clearly, we have the wrong device role configured for Atlanta Leaf 9. So as the, as the um, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I messed up a little bit there. I'm still supposed to be the pull request uh, submitter at this point. I very much apologize for that. So um, I see that I, I see my block status here, and as the pull request creator now, I can see that I'm blocked because I made a mistake. I can go back to my diffs tab, and I can go ahead and fix that mistake right from this tab. If I go to Atlanta Leaf 9, I can go ahead and click on the device, and I can go ahead and make the edit right here. And actually, for that matter, you could do this as the pull request reviewer as well. I can change my device role to Leaf. And I'll go ahead and update that. OK, now I've made a, I've made a change to my data. So I want the pull request, uh, excuse me, I want the CI pipeline to run again. So I can go up to my pull request screen here, go back to my pull request. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to trigger the CI pipeline again. I'll just go to edit and I'll say, fix a bad device description. Uh, Bad device role. OK. So note here that my webhook fires on when a pull request is either created or updated. And I just updated the pull request. OK. So uh, now as, we're, as that was going on, the pull request went back to in review. So let's go ahead and take a look at our reviews tab. And the CI checks are complete. They passed. And it gives us another URL to our results. Uh, we're not going to go ahead and revisit those results since we've seen those before. And this time, they passed. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead and move on. Now, as the person now who is reviewing these pull requests and approving them, I'm going to take a look at my diffs tab. So I am now the person whose job it is to review the pull requests and approve them. So as I look on my diffs tab, I see that, huh, Atlanta Leaf 8 is set to DCOM. Well, I happen to know for sure that that project got postponed indefinitely. So I already know there's at least one error on this, and that's Atlanta Leaf 8 should not be decommissioned anymore. We just had a last minute change. So that's one thing. And I see that circuit diffs, there's a change for one of the circuits. So I can, again, I can go ahead and click on the diff type badge in the diff type column and click on that badge and see that, OK, this circuit, there's a comment here that the circuit renews in April of 2022. OK, I thought it renewed in March. So now there are two things that, that are catching my attention here. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and fix right now. I'm going to fix this decommissioning status. What I can do is I can come up to my commits tab. 
and I will find the commit that dealt with Atlanta Leaf 8. Now, this is a really cool feature. You, anywhere in the pull request process, you can select all the commits, or which might not make sense, but or you can select a group of them or just a single commit, and you can undo it. You can revert that commit. So uh, this is the commit that dealt with the changing the device status for Atlanta Leaf 8. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that commit. I'm going to revert it. And it gives me one more chance to confirm that I want to do that. And yes, I do. OK, so now we have another commit that reverted a prior commit. Right? Let's go back to our pull request. So what I'm going to do next is I fixed one error. As the reviewer, I fixed one error. So to date, up to this point, we've had the CI, the CI pipe testing pipeline catch one error. I, as a human reviewer, caught another error. And now I'm going to ask a question. Let me go to the reviews tab. And the reviews tab, the reviews tab is where you can have a conversation around the commit. You can you can discuss the changes, good or bad. You can put your test results like we've done so far here. So as the reviewer now and approver, I'm going to go ahead and add a review and say, I undid that leaf eight decom status. That is postponed forever. Also, does that circuit renew in March or April? I thought March. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment here. So this is what's called a pull request review. And it's just a piece of conversation around the pull request. Okay, so I've added that. Now, at this point, as the reviewer and approver, I've made it, I've fixed something. And now I've also left a question in the review in the reviews about this, this circuit renewal date. So now I'm gonna switch hats again. I am the person who initially submitted this, this pull request for approval. I see there's been activity on the pull request so I can come in here to this page and I see this last question about the circuit. So I can add my own review, okay? I can say thanks for undoing that change and the circuit Renews, whoa, renews in April. I checked with the provider. All right, so that will be my comment. Now you can notice, a, you know, a, a fairly modest but robust uh, reviews tab coming into shape here, where you have CI pipeline results, you have people talking about changes and questions, stuff like that. This is a transparent place to talk about what you're proposing. So I'm going to switch hats once again now. I am back to being the pull request approver. And I see that I have a new uh, review here. And OK, this person's verified it renews in April. Great. So now, as the reviewer and approver, I'm going to add a review. I'm gonna say, thanks, this looks good. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move it to a approved status. Okay, now this pull request is approved. It was approved on my uh, pull request review down there. And notice up in the top right here, that merge button just appeared. That appears when the pull request gets approved. The merge process is the process that starts to move your proposed changes into production. And as the approver now, I'm gonna go ahead and start that process because this looks good to me. Never mind, I'm completely, everyone so far has completely missed the fact that we do have an error for that device role. Atlanta Leaf 9 should not be VEOS. But we're not catching that. So we're gonna carry that forward for purposes of the demo. So we'll go ahead and merge. And as soon as I click this button here, this will move these changes into the main branch, the production data branch. So right now our changes are going live into 
production data. Great. So we are fully merged now. So let's go ahead and just make sure that what we think is should be there is actually there. So I'm going to go up to version control, go to my branches, and I'm going to go to my main branch, my production branch. And you do that by clicking the activate button here for the branch. Okay. Let's go up to Atlanta, our Atlanta site, which is where all the action happened. And we have 11 devices there as expected. Uh, Atlanta Leaf 9, here's our new device. Whoops, this is a problem. We will deal with that in a second. And if we go back to our circuits, this first NTC circuit here, it renews in April of 2022. All right, so the data we expect to be there is now in our main and production branch, albeit some of it incorrect. Speaking of that, now I'm gonna play the role of an operations person in this scenario. So at this point, I'm an operations automation technician. I am monitoring the network and I start to see some weird stuff going on, mainly in the Atlanta area. I'm starting to get some alarms, things aren't looking quite right. So being a good operations automation tech, I'm gonna go ahead and check my data. So I can go up to version control and I'm gonna look at my, the commits for my main branch. Now, this is what I was referring to earlier. This is a complete history of all the data changes that have happened in your main production branch. This has got all of them. So as I review this, I see that there's a recent merge in Atlanta Leaf changes. There's a commit for a merge of changes in the Atlanta area into Maine. Now, at this point, I'm sure a lot of us or most of us can appreciate in an operations environment, when you have alarms going and you have a merge of new data into your production that might be dozens or perhaps hundreds of changes, you might not be able to figure out the exact change, specific change or changes that are causing the problems you're seeing right now. So being a good operations person, I just wanna get back to my last known good working state and I wanna do it quickly. This is how you do it. Again, you have the, the capability to select multiple commits. We're gonna select one commit. Now this single commit that I have checked here is for the merge that merged all of our changes into production. And I'm gonna go ahead and revert it right now because this was a really recent change and I'm getting really recent alarms in the same geogra geography of Atlanta. So I'll check this here and I'll go down to revert. Okay, it's giving me one more chance to uh, take a look here. Yes, I wanna revert these changes, all of them. Okay, we now have another commit that reflects we reverted a merge. So let's just verify that what is what should not be there anymore is not. So we'll go to organization and sites, back to Atlanta, and we have 10 devices there, which is expected. Atlanta Leaf nine is completely gone as expected. And if we look at our circuits, look at this first NTT circuit here. This is where I initially made the comment and that comment is gone as well. So we've successfully undone the changes that we recently merged into production. So let's take a look back at Verge Control and let's go back to the commits page. Now, forensically, we can go back and figure out what we just undid and why it might have been causing a problem. So if I click on this revert, on the, sorry, on the commit for the revert, if I just click on it, it will take me to all the diffs for that commit. And there are quite a few of them. And it's really the opposite of what we just did a few minutes ago. We removed Atlanta Leaf 9 and um, you know all these interfaces went away along with it. Now, forensically, as we're going back here, we, we'd figure out, oh, we had the wrong device type in our data. Understandably, that might cause some problems with automation and some other stuff in the network. So this was the error. So we've discovered what the error was now as we went back and investigated. And we can also use this as a lesson to improve our uh, CI testing pipeline to add a test to match up a device role of LEAF with a specific set of allowed device types for that, for that role. All right, so this concludes the, the demo portion.
Now, I'd like to just cover a few highlights here. Not a bot running the version control app brings a versionable Dolt database to Not a bot. This version control environment in Not a bot allows Not a bot to, to perform workflows similar to those found in Git and GitHub, including explicit checkpoints for people to review, automated testing pipelines, partial or en masse rollbacks of your changes, and a history of all changes to your production data. You can also stage your data changes without affecting production, and you can quickly revert these changes. These workflows make it safer to change production automation data in Nautobot. Okay. And before I go, I want to give a quick uh, bump to our Nautobot version control app video series that we've recently published. There's two, there's two sets of videos. One is an introductory series uh, where we cover to topics like what is the problem we're solving here? What does a version, version control mean in Nautobot's database? How to navigate the top level version control menu and managing pull requests with a version control app. Secondly, there's a demo series, which is demos clearly, which involves setting up a demo environment. So, so the same environment I just used today, I have a video now that you can view to set up your own demo environment to run through these workflows yourself. And that includes sample data. Uh, unit two is a uh, unit two and three cover what we just demoed today. And then unit four is really cool as well because it shows you how to interact with the version control app programmatically. So how to use APIs to query specific branches, to create pull requests, to create pull request reviews uh, in Python, PyNautobot, and Postman. So that is unit four. It's a really cool video. So you should check it out. Uh, one more bump to our survey, please don't forget, help shape the future of an Autobot. And thank you, that, that concludes the, this version control app demo. Great job, Tim. Awesome job to Tim Viola and Tim Shryak. Uh, I wanna pause and open it up for any additional questions. I do see that, that, that the chat is very active. Uh, big thank you for everybody submitting questions, but let, let's pause and see if there are any additional questions that we can help answer. I know the, uh, the team here is answering some questions. Uh, also, big thank you for all the contributors that contributed to this project. It is absolutely phenomenal. Very, very powerful. So thank you so much. Uh, really cool stuff. The version controls is, is really cool. And it is open source and available today. So if anybody wants to give it a test drive, uh, be free to, uh, to check it out. Cool. If anybody would like a demo or anything uh, further detailing this feature or Notobot, we are happy to do so. Uh, feel free to reach out at info at networkedcode.com. You could also go to our website. We have forms that you can fill out. Somebody will respond back to you in a prompt manner. Um, I'm going to give it maybe about another 30 seconds or so for questions if we can answer. I think we got it all. Thanks so much, Tim. That was that was amazing. Uh, really great demo. Great job. Oh, quick thank question you, from uh, Ramesh. Perhaps somebody uh, could could answer that. Is there any way to know the state after commit before you actually commit? I think the short answer is no on that one. <laughs> you okay. have to at least create a commit in a new branch before you can tell what the difference would be. Good question though. Another question. Does it send emails for anything related oh. to PRs or merges? I can answer that to a point here. So uh, we talked about earlier about the, uh, the webhooks. I also have webhooks configured to send notifications to my Slack channel. Which I, which I just was here. So in, just in the testing environment, this is how I knew that my webhooks were working. But you can set up webhooks to go to a Slack channel or, or something else to get notifications. That's one, one way to solve that problem. Great questions. Any others? 
and gr great pre presentation, Tim, again. Can't thank you enough. Everybody who contributed, Glenn, Jathan, Jason, uh, many of the folks here at Network to Code, uh, super proud of everybody's effort. This is an amazing accomplishment, really cool and powerful stuff. So just want to thank you all again for, for the contributions. Um, any other questions? Looks like, thanks, Graham, Ramesh, thank you so much for joining. Amazing. All right, we're going to give you 20 minutes back. I am going to close down this recording. I do want to thank everybody for 